Let's take a look at why arrays are zero-based. We'll look at it in C-sharp, but this is true for any language. I remember being a brand new programmer and seeing arrays being zero-based and thinking, wow, that's just so wrong. Why don't you just make it one-based? That's what I'm used to. Of course, I also thought binary and hex were wrong, and then once I mastered that, I realized, oh, I'm just being ignorant. It's actually easier to have arrays be zero-based than one base once we figure out the logic. Anyway, I have some C-sharp code here. It's a little bit different than anything I've written before. I have this unsafe keyword and this fixed keyword and then this syntax for a pointer. But let's begin here. Hopefully this looks a little familiar. I've made an array and I've put some elements inside my array. And this array sits out on the heap. I want to make a pointer to my array. And in order to make a pointer to my array, I have to do that in an unsafe context. And why is this context considered unsafe? Because pointers allow me to just walk around all over in memory and I can write to them and damage things. Generally with C Sharp, .NET, you can't hurt yourself, but using pointers you can actually uh, do some bad things. If you really want to see what kind of bad things you can do, go to my C++ list and check out pointers. But anyway, I have to do this in an unsafe context. And I also had to go to my Scratchpad properties and click Allow Unsafe Code. Otherwise, this would not compile. And then I had to use this fix keyword, which means fix my array to its array location. Do not allow the garbage collector anywhere in here. Do not allow the garbage collector to move my array around. Now the syntax you're seeing here is from C++. I have P, and P is a pointer to my array. Now we know in C sharp that arrays are objects. And what do I mean by that? I can say my array dot length. We've seen me call length. I can say my array dot lots of different methods out here. My array is an object and it also does bound checking bounds checking. We've seen where I say my array sub ten gets twenty. Well there aren't 10 slots in here. In fact, this would be the 11th slot if we're thinking one base, but there's not 10 slots in here, so this would break. And it's all because array is an object, and it, and it does those checks for us at runtime. C++ arrays are not objects. Arrays are simply names to memory addresses. So when we get into this syntax down here, it actually looks a little bit more C++-ish. Let me draw our array right here with our five elements in it and five two eight four one so when i say int star p p is a pointer which you could kind of think of like a reference but it's a, a an address essentially and that address is the first byte of the first element in my array now ints each take four bytes so here's one two three, four bytes for the five, and one, two, three, four bytes for the two, one, two, three, four bytes for the eight, so on and so forth. Each item in here takes four bytes. And if I want to look at the first item in my array, I do this thing called dereference, where I say, okay, go to P and follow the address that P is referencing and give me the value at that address. That's what the star P here means. I know that's a little confusing because the star here means P is a pointer and then the star here means dereference P lets me look at the value out there. So if I run this, let me control F5 this and you'll see that we're getting the first item there. It's a 5. Now I can actually change what I'm referencing here. I can put a parenthesis and say, hey, go to P plus 1. All right, well, the plus one here means what data type is P pointing at? Add one times the size of that data type. Well, P is pointing at ints, and one times the size of an int would be four. So P plus one would not be this byte right here, the oneth byte in. It would be one times the size of an int, which is four, which would actually put us at this byte right there all right that this right here is p plus one and it's simple arithmetic on these memory addresses p plus one okay we go four bytes in and hey we got the two all right so watch i'll control a five this and you see hey oh if i don't squish my window we see the two well can you think of what p plus two would be 
P plus 2 would be 2 times the size of an int. The size of an int is 4, so that would take us 8 bytes in from where P is. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. P plus 2 takes us to, oh look, it's actually the value 8 as well, but it's 8 bytes in and the value 8. So let me control F5 this, and you see we get the value 8. Well, what if I wanted to do this plus trick, but I still wanted to access 5? What would I add? Well, I'd have to add 0. We're 0 based, right? P is a pointer to the first address in the array, and if I don't want to offset into the array at all, it's going to be P plus 0. So when you use an array, like if I said console write line my array sub 0, the math that goes on there is let's go to the first element in my array and then offset into it this much. Well, the first element in my array is 5, and if I offset a 0, then I'm going to still be a 5. I'm not going to move into 2, 8, 4, or 1. And that's why arrays are zero-based, is because we're dealing with memory addresses. And if, if I brought up C++ and actually did a C++ example, you'd see the exact same thing. My array is actually the name of the first element inside the array. And so if I want to look at that first element, I don't want to index into it any further than that first element, so I have to start at element 0. It's all about memory addresses in RAM. Now in C-sharp arrays are objects, and they actually store some extra info, like their length, and I think there's a type pointer in there and other stuff. So the actual value 5 does not start at the beginning of the array, but c sharp smart and realizes, hey, if you're taking a pointer to the array, I'll figure out what the actual address of the first item is in this array. I can actually prove this to you, but I'm going to have to do this by looking at some low-level assembly code. And if you want to get familiar with assembly code, go watch my assembly programming playlist. If you don't, just sit back and watch, because a lot of this will still make sense, even though you don't know about the nitty-gritty details going on here. I'm going to hit F11, and we get this wicked debug screen coming up. We get our registers. Registers are little pieces of memory that sit on the CPU. We can also see our RAM over here. We see our C sharp here on the left. I hope you turned up to high definition. Control Alt D. This brings up the disassembly window. These are the native instructions. You can see that the Debugger's nice here and gives us our C sharp and then our C sharp turned into all this stuff down here. I'm going to F10 down to let's see this call instruction right here. So this is the address out in RAM of our array that we created. I'm going to grab this address, copy it, and say, hey memory window, I want to go look at the values at that address. Okay, so from here on down is our array and the values aren't in here quite yet but I can see that our array length is 5 and I believe this is a type pointer you can go look at my uh, C sharp reflection playlist to see about the type pointer and things like that but whatever this value is it's part of our array because our array starts at this address and that's this address I can see the array length in here and I believe the actual data in the array begins right here and goes down. In C++, our array, our array name would be right here. It would go to the actual data and go downward. C++ does not track the length of the array and that kind of thing for you. You're right next to the processor. Anyway, different topic for a different time. Let me F10 over this. Eventually, as I step through all this, we shall see our data fill up our array. Oh, look at that. That instruction right there. Somewhere in there, I wasn't paying attention. I was talking but if you can look at this, look at these values here. We have 5, 2, 8, 4, 1. And in our original code, we had 5, 2, 8, 4, 1. So our actual data begins right here at memory address. If I don't cover it up, memory address 608. All right, now let's step in here. We're going to get P, a pointer to my array. And as we step down through this, we'll eventually see... If I can catch this right there. Look, EAX, this instruction right here, load effective address, EAX plus 8 into EAX. Well, the plus 8 is to get us past these 8 bytes right here. Now, let me just start over. 
uh, withdrawing this. This is our beginning of our array. I told you the rest of this right here is just extra meta information. I believe this row right here is the type information. I know this row is the length, and the actual data starts right here. So my pointer, inside my pointer, they said, let's load this address, which is 8 bytes past all the fluff. The fluff starts here, and let's go 8 bytes. Here's 1 byte, 2 byte, 3 byte, 4 byte, 5 byte, 6 byte, 7 byte, 8 bytes. Let's go 8 bytes past that, and that's where the actual pointer will point to, because this is the beginning of the data. Here's the 5, 2, 8, 4, 1, the values I stuffed in our array. And now if I F10 on this, um, obviously this isn't very interesting doing P plus 0, but actually maybe it is interesting to see P plus 0, because we're talking about why arrays are zero-based, and it's simply because P plus 0, well, P, this P right here, is pointing at this address. And if I want to look at the value in the address, okay, P is actually storing the address. This is something else I could beat into your head. This is the address. This is the value at that address. This is the address. This is the value at this address. I go back and forth with this all, my, all the time with my son. P is storing this number P is 4-byte pointer storing this number, which is this address. And to look at the value at the address, I have to go to the actual RAM, and here's the value. The plus 0 means don't go any further into it, but if I did a plus, plus 1 here, remember we tried a plus 1 right there, then that would be 1 times the size of an int. Well, the size of an int is 4 bytes, so plus 1 would actually be this address. And then the value at that address would be 2. And then P plus 2 would be this address, because that's 2 times the size of an int, and 2 times the size of an int is 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 brings us right here. The value at this byte is 8, and we have 0, 0, 0. I know it feels weird to have the 8 on the left. It seems like we should have the 8 on the right here, but that has to go with has to do with Indian swapping. You can look at my videos at Indian swapping. Anyway. That's why arrays are zero-based. It's probably way too long of a video to discuss why arrays are zero-based. But very simply, the array marks the beginning of some bytes, and then we just offset into there. And the first item in the array is item zero, because we don't want to offset any further into the array.